All right, so again, our second presenter today is an update presentation. He's presented at One Million Cups um, maybe more than once. Once you present, okay, once you present, you can do an update presentation every 12 months. So keep that in mind, and we will remind you as organizers as well. So Mark is the owner of Centennial State Knotworks, and his last name is really hard, but he has a really great way of reminding you how to say it. So please welcome to the stage um, Mark Barsocchini. Did I say that right? Yeah, you did. You got it just right. All right, so how much am I going to annoy you if I take this mic off the stand? Because I can't sit still. Brilliant. Well, keep up. Okay, uh, so she said it's a great way for, uh, an easy way to remember my name. It goes like this. Bar, so, key, me. Now you all speak Italian. Um, and in case anybody's wondering, yes, I am. And I'll see you in December. Um, <laughs> This, uh, my, my journey with, uh, with knot tying started when I was a boy. I was in something called Sea Scouts, which is like Boy Scouts, but on water. Uh, we had a 56-foot sailboat, 13 feet wide, and we would sail the San Francisco Bay every month, every week, or every weekend. We were either working on the boat or sailing on the boat. Um, and I started to tie knots. Then I moved to um, probably the furthest away vertically I could get from the water and stop sailing. My son joined um, Cub Scouts and they said, uh, is there anybody here who can help the boys tie knots? And I went, well, yeah, I can do that. So they give me this box that's full of rope that is an absolute <laughs> And I clean that up and I start te teaching the boys knots. Uh, this was back in the time when uh, the parachute cord f craze was going on and you could get four colors of parachute cord. It was white, black, green, sometimes blue, and you were really excited when you found red. Um, and I started playing with that, and I started getting that passion back. Um, I ended up buying a book that had been on my bucket list for a long time. It's called Ashley's Book of Knots. You can find it on Amazon. It has uh, 3,600 knots, 7,200 illustrations, and it is the book that I take when I know I'm going to be bored somewhere. Um, and as I started, I started seeing things that I couldn't do with parachute cords, so I started getting Manila and then hemp rope and starting to do splices and starting to do things more creative creatively um, I had a book. I have a book that this gentleman explains. He was at a fancy dress party It was written in the 40s and he forgot his cufflinks and so he took his I know <laughs> um, Well, I mean if he had if he had a French cuff shirt He's not going to be able to button his shirt. So that was a problem. So he buys a pair of black shoelaces and ties a, cu to a pair of cufflinks. And I went, I wonder if I can do that with the fly fishing line that I just got from my grandfather who died. And so I started playing with that. And then I started just showing it my friends and they're like, you should start <laughs> selling that. And I said, well, that's kind of fun. That'd be a, how can I do this differently? How can I do it better? Um, and I start making things for men. That was my idea. I want to make things for guys. I'm going to make cufflinks. And it's, this isn't necessarily for guys, but something else I'm passionate about. And I also want to make uh, lanyards for anglers, um, for fly fishermen. And so I start doing that. And then two blessings happen back to back. Uh, I lose my job, and my grandmother passed away. Now, it was her time. It, it, it was sad, but it was her time, and it was good. But I had a little nest egg, and I had a lot of time on my hands. And it was just about the time, has anybody been downtown and visited a store called Eclectic? Yeah, okay. Um, so the person who runs Eclectic is named Perry. And she got from two different locations, two different people, you need to talk to this guy. And when she opened that store for just a holiday pop-up, we were gonna be there for two months, we were gonna see how things go. The thing I learned about business as a small business owner that uh, if there's one takeaway to have is learn how to pivot. Um, I am married to my business. I love my business. But what I do changes depending on what the needs of the people are around me. And what I heard over and over and over and over and over again was, do you make earrings? I'm like, no, I don't make earrings. And then I started to. And now I don't make cufflinks anymore because earrings move a lot. You ladies buy a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, the other thing is, the, 
I didn't intend on starting um, a business that is renewable. That was not my intent. I literally fell into that. Um, I started making stuff out of fly fishing line because I could. F I had some around the house. And then I found out that I could go to Angler's Covey and get more of it, and they would give it to me for free instead of throwing it away. And then a friend of mine says, hey, you tie knots. And I'm like, yeah. And he throws me some climbing rope and says, do something with that. OK. And so I start making things out of climbing rope. I'm at a Christmas party, and a buddy's friend is restringing the kid's guitar. And he goes, you make stuff out of string, right? And I said, yeah. And he throws me a string. And all of a sudden, I'm making strings out of guitar string. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I'm making rings out of guitar string. Um, the idea of sitting back and having this, I do this, I could see would be death to my business. And being able to expand and, and adapt um, a passion of mine was what really kept me going. Um, my ex-wife used to say, if you stand still long enough in the house, he'll tie something on you. <laughs> and that's not an inaccurate statement. No. <laughs> um, actually, I, I was at a brewery recently, and I do tie Nantucket sailors bracelets, so technically it's true. Um, but it's, it's one of those things that, uh, again, I can't, I can't stand still. I don't go to movies because I'm like, I can't sit for two hours. Um, I'll play a movie at house, but I'm tying something. And having that passion to carry you through, carry me through, um, is what allows me to stay three years going. I've been naughty for three years. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> First, good barber. <laughs> Indeed, we see we have the same barber. I've got to I've got to work on the lower part. Sleep sitting up, it sinks through. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do we how do we see all the things that you do? Is there a website? Uh, what do, what do we have? Yeah, um, csnotworks.com. Um, go down to eclectic. Um, that's the best place to find it. Um, I'm on Instagram. Uh, it's been a rough. 2021, and I'm trying to get, I'm getting my footing for 2022, so I'm ramping things up. Um, and there has been talk with a former location that we used to have one million cups at, uh, at the local relic or the Carter Payne building. Um, I'm also a member of uh, a group called the International Guild of Knot Tires, if that ever comes up in your trivial your pursuit group. Um, and I've thought about just having an an a, a monthly meeting at Carter Payne, where I just sit down at one of the tables and drink a beer and tie knots, and people can come up and say, what are you doing, and how can I do that? Is this on? Okay. Uh, my wife's got an e-commerce business. Would you be open to selling some something on, you know, partnership? I, 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 am al I don't say no to anything up front <laughs> until you, we, we sit down and figure out where things are. Right now, my Etsy store is devoid of content because, like I said, um, last year was like getting a root canal through a nostril. Possible, not pleasant. Um, <laughs> but um, absolutely, I'd love to sit down and have a chat. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so th your diversity is inspiring, I think, that do get antsy, like me. I have to do many things. So what are some of the other passions and um, things you do for the community in the business world? For the community in the business world, that's hard. What, wh what else do I do? Yeah. Um, I work with wood uh, in a very primitive way, some would say. Um, I partner with a lot of people. One of the things, well, um, I have another idea for another business because, no, I don't stop. Um, I want to cut the bottoms off of liquor bottles and put an LED Edison bulb in it and then have a cloth-covered cord to make pendant lamps and call the company twice lit. So we've already got that, we've already got that uh, um, registered for the domain. Um, one of the things that I figured out with my business is that uh, I, I, understanding business wholesale pricing, specifically retail, is hard. Um, and it, well, rephrase that, it can be hard. And so I know what my costs are. I know what I want to get paid. I want to know what, um, what the market will bear. And so most of my stuff is, I get the stuff donated to me, and then it's my hourly rate to make it. I found out with my guitar strings, that's not 
necessarily true. And so I'm able to take my guitar strings and actually come up with a wholesale price, which excited the heck out of me because my background is also in IT business analysis and project management. So I sat down, and, um, if, you, if you want me to figure something out with numbers, just give me a spreadsheet and leave me alone for 10 minutes. Um, and I sat down for 10 minutes and came up with a spreadsheet and I know that I need to tie 4,219 rings a year to make a living wage and that's four hours a day. That's it. And I'm like, I could do that for four hours a day. Um, one of the other things that came up was um, recently on my website, uh, I got reached out to by a design firm in San Francisco. And they said, we have a project with a firm in Silicon Valley, or we're wondering if you could help us with that. Their, their theme is vintage nautical. And I said, yes, I can do that. Long story short, um, my first architectural installation will be for Google. Um, so I'm going to fly out to San Francisco. This is the worst part of this trip. <laughs> I'm going to fly out to San Francisco, live on my buddy's boat for two weeks, eat crab and tie knots. Aww. I'm like, I, yeah, the phrase, is, the phrase would be, please remove the gun from my temple. Um, Bob. So a lot of entrepreneurs take their passion, make it a business, and then lose their passion. Yep. Do you ever see that with what, I mean, I know that, I mean, I wear one of your rings, right? So yeah. I know that... Um, this is a passion for you. How do you keep it a passion and still make it a business? That, I, I'm going to say something that is controversial. Okay, you love controversy? Fantastic. Anybody who says, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. Yeah, you probably won't eat either. <laughs> because you might really, really love it. But specifically in retail, um, you have to go from creative to productive and people I, I i know a lot of creative people and they struggle um they just i just don't want to do the same thing over and over again um because i run at such a high operating temperature up here hence the haircut um i'm able to sit down and tie something that i have sufficient muscle memory with and let my brain start doing other things so I'll put something mindless on on Netflix so there's noise, so I have company. And I'll just sit down with um, a box. I literally have an ammo can. And when I say ammo, it, no, I'm sorry, ammo crate. And it is this long, this wide, and this tall, and it is full of guitar strings. Um, if you're wondering, I, I've partnered with uh, Guitar Center. I go out there once a week, and they are happy to not throw those things away, but see them go into something renewable and, and usable. Um, and so you have to accept the fact that when you start doing this as work, it is no longer, you can still be passionate about it, but you're going to have to work. Um, and making that, keeping that balance is important. That's why I, tr I'm, I, I will try new things. I, I feel like a small fish in a big pond because I know a whole bunch of knot tires all around the world who are amazing. And I'm like, there is no way I could do that. There's no way I could get to that level. And then I step out of my, my, my community, and I'm like, wow, there's a lot of people who can't tie their shoes. <laughs> now, and, and, and I'll say you're right, I'll tell you right now, um, well, and it's funny, because I, I don't have any laces in these boots, but there is a special way to tie your shoes to make sure they don't untie, and I can talk to you about, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, the problem is that you're tying a granny and not a, uh, not a square knot, and that's the problem, and we can talk about that later. Um, but keeping that passion, I mean, <laughs> I want, you have to keep reminders of why. And so um, I have a sticker on the back of my car in, in the window, it's about nine inches wide, um, that is my logo. So every time I, I, re I back up, I see that. My license plate, if you ever see a red Subaru around town with a, a pirate looking sticker in the back window and a license plate that says not guy, K-N-O-T, that would be me. Because you need constant reminders of, yeah, this is a slog, but this is who you are and this is passion and you can do this. It's, Plus, I've played rugby, and so, you know, you practice, 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 and then you play, and you wake up the next day, and you hurt. <laughs> and then you're like, I can't wait till next week. And people are looking at you like, what the hell is wrong with you? Um, that's also part of it. If it's a passion, it's easy to pick up, even though, even though it does get to a slog. Is this how Dad chose rings? Yeah, because it was the one that was affordable. <laughs> <laughs> What else, what else do I do that, oh, you want me to talk about that? Um, 
It is a business, yes. Um, I have a very talented friend named Lauren McKenzie. She runs Ren Creative. And um, when I lost my job, I had a, go a white goatee um, that was about, it was a little shorter than this. And I met a gentleman um, who previously who was a Santa. And he said, is it all white? And I said, I don't know. Um, he said, well, if, if it is, I could put you to work. And I went, well, that's good to know. And I walked away. So eight months later, I'm like, hey, I don't have a job. I should see what this whole thing looks like. And it was like an experience in, cr the, um, what was it? What's the Santa Claus, when it just starts coming in. And I'm looking in the mirror going, man, I'm him. Wow. wow. Um, and so uh, my first year as Santa Claus was three years ago. I was uh, the Santa for the Chapel Hills Mall. Um, the last two years, I've been the Santa for the Denver Parade of Lights. Um, I got asked if I would go to Pittsburgh <laughs> um, <laughs> and be a Santa for that mall. And I told my, my agent, I didn't, I'd think about it, but I really didn't want to. Um, they were going to pay me $16,000 for five weeks of work. Um, and I went, uh, you know, I'll think about it. I met the photo company that wanted, the guy who runs the photo company that does it, and he says, uh, hey, I need to talk to you. And I said, is it about Pittsburgh? And he said, yes. And I went, great, I'm not going. <laughs> and he's just like, I'll give you 20. And I put my hand on his shoulder, and I said, if I was the kind of guy that would say yes to 20, I'm not the guy you want to go to Pittsburgh. And he went, you're right, so why don't you want to go? And we talked about it, and he said, no, you're right, you can't go. You absolutely can't go. He comes to me two hours later, we were at a Santa training, don't ask. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he pulls me out of training and he goes, how are you for day trips? I'm like, I'm totally golden for day trips. What are you thinking? He said, there's a corporation in California that's going to have a Christmas party. They haven't had one for two years because of COVID. And I think you would be perfect because of one of your, I have a career goal as a Santa, and this is, is good, yeah, I know. That's, that was his face too, he was like, what? Yeah, I, told, I looked at him dead in the face and I said, I wanna do Macy's by the time I'm 60, and I turn 53 on Friday. So he's got seven years to get me there. Um, he said, but I think this gig will really help you get to your goal, and I said, yeah. He goes, oh great, we'll fly you out, six hour gig, Three to four thousand dollars. We'll fly you home the next day. I'm like, okay, that sounds fine. By the way, who's it for? Oh, it's for Warner Brothers. So, um, yeah, I might, I, I might be going out to Southern California to be Santa Claus. the The downside is that um, I have taken on more healthy habits in the last six months. Um, and so, when I was Santa Claus before, it was this, and now it's this. And so I'm like, okay, well, now I get to invest in a fat suit that I can actually put like cold packets in so I'll, it'll keep me cool because um, I don't know about all of you, but I am so freaking warm right now. So I, w I wish this window opened. But anyway, to make a long story short, um, I'm actually gonna be hanging out with her in July um, at an event that is over on a table over there and you can see what I look like when I'm suited up. So um, yeah, it should be fun. If you wanna get a picture with, Christmas of, with Santa in Christmas in July, we can, we can get that worked out. And we'll talk to you too, because this would be fun to do here. Yeah. Other questions, comments, or jokes? Okay, I am going to offend some people, and I'm sorry. Um, the, the predominant number of people that are doing Santa right now are um, of a certain demographic. I am at the very, 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 very low end of that. Um, like I said, I turn 53 next, or this Friday. Um, the rest of them are retired. They're, lo they're looking to augment their retirement. They're looking to boost their ego. I mean, basically, it's 90% it, of them, they're, they're there because they want more money and they want to have attention. Um, and what I tell these guys, like I said, my background is in scouting. Um, what I tell these guys is, if your motivation is taller than this, then you should stop doing this. So what Santa training is, is um, this is where you put your hands. By the way, why does Santa wear white gloves? Anybody know? So you can see his hands in a picture. Uh-huh, so my hands are always up here. And if you ever, if you ever look at pictures of, um, Keanu Reeves, when he takes a picture of somebody and they're like right here, you can see his hands sticking out behind them. 
because he makes sure that somebody can't say, his hand was on my, he touched my, no, none of that. So Sandus' hands are white, so you can see them in the picture. But we talk about specifically, and I hate to, I'm gonna share dirty laundry, because I can. Um, yeah, basic, basically, exactly. Um, these guys get to a diva level. So these guys get to the mall, and they sit down, and they start making um, inappropriate comments, and they start saying, can you bring me water? Um, some of them fall asleep in the chair. The level of professionalism, um, because these guys don't take it seriously, is really, really hard to keep up. And so um, we talk to them about, don't do this, don't do that. Um, this is what your job is. You don't, you aren't all that a bag of chips. You are just Santa. You don't worry about how they're taking pictures. You don't worry about the people who are working there. You don't worry about the families who are coming through. You are Santa. And if any of you, and I don't think anybody in this room has seen me with a kid yet, um, but if there was a child who walked in right now, in fact, I'll tell you a story. I'm walking around King Supers in a black t-shirt, okay? Beard, black t-shirt. I come around this corner, there is this girl who's about this tall, and she just goes, no, she couldn't say it. She just went, and I went, did you just call me Santa? And she's like, so for, well, if you're ever Santa, this is the first thing you do. Is it because I have a beard and I'm fat? <laughs> and, and she goes, I said, why do you think I'm Santa? And she goes, you have a sparkle in your eye. And all you can do at that point is just this. I'll see you at Christmas. <laughs> and walk away. The other one last year was, that was awesome. I was down in Whitefield Elementary School of the Arts. And uh, this little boy walks up to me, gives me his list, which happens all the time. <laughs> Goes into my vest. By the way, just for the record, I have a box that has all of my lists. Um, we talk about what's on his list, we make jokes, we laugh, mom takes a picture, he gets up and walks away. Mom does this. There's something you need to know. And I went, okay, where were my hands? Was that an inappropriate joke? <laughs> I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing the inventory. And she says, in our house, we write letters to Santa the day after Thanksgiving. I'm like, okay. I have had that letter in my purse for three and a half weeks. I'm like, okay. We have been to Walmart. We have been to the mall. We have been to Bass Pro. And I don't know how many other Santas we've seen. And he walks up and goes, no, don't need my list. We walked in today. He took off with his friend. I'm talking to his friend's mom. He comes running back over to me and says, Mom, Mom, I need my list. And then she goes, oh, okay, wait, what? Wait, wait now? And she looks up and she went, wow. And she, said, she just looks at me and says, so whatever it is that you do, just keep doing it. So, yeah. So Santa's a lot of fun. Um, it, it really, really, and it's, it's, it's fun with the community. Um, it's life-giving. Um, and I'm not trying to, to lie to anybody. I'm just trying to keep a belief that there is a little bit of magic and there can be. Um, and that's okay. Where am I at, Flip? Uh, two, minutes two minutes and 50 seconds. Special question. First, a little different. What can we do as a Colorado Springs community to support you in your business? Um, Okay, two answers, because there's two businesses. So I'm gonna answer the, the, the second business that we talked about first, mm -hmm. and that is um, just believe in the magic. When Christmas comes, slow down. It's not about the presence, it's about being present. Um, that's one of the reasons I turned on a job in Pittsburgh, because uh, through um, a difficult time, I had all my kids around, and at the holidays, and I wanted to do that again. I didn't want to go to Pittsburgh and miss that. Um, the second thing is, and this sounds kind of arrogant, but it's not, um, I don't know how you can help me 
from a business standpoint. But one of the reasons I'm still standing here and I still have a business registered with the state is because of the community that I'm part of Eclectic. So being part of a community, lifting people up, encouraging them when things get down, um, you don't have to lift them. You don't have to carry them. But if it's somebody, in fact, the best thing you can do is if they're sitting down on the trail because they just don't have it anymore, sit down with them. Um, because there are times when it, it just gets too much to carry. And that's what you can do. Coming to these events and seeing who you can lift up and carry and encourage. Um, from my business standpoint, <coughs> if I get to the point where there's growth and I need another knot tire, I'll come back and see if anybody wants to be <laughs> naughty with me. <laughs> can you tie a five by three Turk set at a wire? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like that attitude. Um, <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I mean, from a community standpoint, um, you know, taking care of each other and lifting each other up and sometimes sitting down with each other, I think, is the best thing we can do. I appreciate coming back, the opportunity to come back. You guys have a great week. Okay, so here's the other thing about this, <laughs> is my other one. This is white, okay. and, and this is fly fishing line, because like I said, this thing, I, I give it a week, and then I'm going co to cover it with something. <laughs> but I'll do it with fly fishing line that you can see through, so that you can still see the logo, because that's important. I was wondering if he was like doing the moonwalk or something while he was standing in place because it, it didn't do that for, uh, for Derek. Um, well, thank you for sticking with us today. I must have started late or talked too much, um, <laughs> but keep in mind, I guess so. <laughs> but you guys are amazing. I love seeing this group every week. Uh, hope your weekend was fantastic, that you have an amazing summer, and we'll see you every Wednesday. Um, and that's... I, thank you. Next Wednesday, 11 to 1, includes lunch. If you have special dietary needs, just bring your own, but you do still need to register. So look at your old 1 Million Cups emails or just go on Facebook, um, Pikes Peak Small Business Week. Is They have their own page for that. And then, yeah, you should find it through all kinds of other um, avenues too. Go ahead. It's at the City Odd, which is great because the City Odd is closed to the public right now, but this is a city event. So we get to be in there, and no one's really been in there regularly for the past two, three years. So it's a great opportunity to go see what's new. So, yeah, thank you guys for being here. We'll see you next week uh, at the City Odd.